two brothers have today been jailed for life following an injury shooting in the Wirral. At around 10.40pm on Wednesday 11th May 2022, a 17-year-old male presented at Arrow Park Hospital with a non-life-threatening gunshot wound to his leg. An investigation uncovered that the victim had been stood at a bus stop in Birkenhead when a group of males on electric bikes approached and opened fire six times hitting him once in the leg. Following inquiries, the twin brothers James Byrne and Curtis Byrne and originally from the rural area, were both arrested and charged with attempted murder and possession of a firearm with intent to endanger life. They were found guilty of both offences following a trial and were sentenced to life imprisonment to serve a minimum of 18 years and 8 months when they appeared at Liverpool Crown Court. Detective Inspector John Mullin from the Firearms Investigation Team said this has been a lengthy and complex investigation but thanks to the hard work of Firearms Investigation Team these brothers will now spend a considerable number of years behind bars because of their actions. He said this was an indiscriminate and reckless use of a gun which could have had even more serious or even fatal consequences. It is right that they should be behind bars where they can no longer cause fear or harm in the communities. Now, I'm going to go into this story a little bit and how everything gets interlinked with the murder of Ellie Edwards who was gunned down outside the Lighthouse pub in Wallasey. May she rest in peace. So, the Byrne brothers, they headed out one evening on their e-bikes. The destination was going to be the Beechwood Social Club. It was only a few minutes ride from their mother's house. The then 20-year-old twin brothers, they were there to carry out an assassination of a rival gang member. Their mission came in the midst of a feud that was escalating during six months of gun violence, drugs and burglaries. There were tit-for-tat shootings, one which would leave Curtis Byrne himself lying seriously injured in a hospital bed and it ultimately, as I said, led to the tragic murder of a wholly innocent woman outside a pub on Christmas Eve. So, the night at the social club where the two siblings went and did their shooting, as I said, they left their mother's address and they were looking for somebody from the Ford estate which was also known as the Beechwood. They were said to have found Gra who was then a 17-year-old and he was seen on CCTV walking beside Beechwood Social Club before three men on the electric bikes approached from the same direction. The footage then showed them circling the victim and there was a, another rider who the prosecution alleged was a Mr Smith, although he was ultimately cleared of any involvement in the incident, tried to knock him off his feet. The prosecutor then described how the teenager ran for his life as James Byrne fired again and again and again with a gun. Gra was struck once to the back of the thigh with the bullet becoming lodged within his leg but he was able to make his escape via a rare parade of shops nearby. Jurors heard that the shooting came against the backdrop of two opposing gangs who were involved in the control of the drugs trade. There was one which was located on the Woodchurch estate and there was another gang based in Beechwood. The court was told that tensions had been rising since early 2020 between the two factions and just got worse from there on. There was one incident in 2021 in September which supposedly saw Mr Smith chase down the streets on his bike by a red Ford Focus before he was struck and left with numerous broken bones. The car was subsequently found burnt out on the eastern fringes of the Ford estate. Then on March the 22nd 2022 a man called Mr Taylor was shot in the stomach as he allegedly dealt drugs in Woodchurch. CCTV footage showed him being approached by a grey Ford car before he ran off as a series of five bangs were heard followed by screams. The vehicle was also later torched on the outskirts of Beechwood and Taylor was described as being as a close friend of James Byrne with the two having lived together at one stage. So the Woodchurch affiliated Burns were said to have targeted McGraw as part of the Ford OCG whilst he was out dealing drugs. The Crown alleged that this formed the motivation for the shooting with the victim having stashed a bag containing a number of wraps of coke in nearby bushes ahead of the attempted hit. CCTV showed the brothers leaving the address before being captured where James Byrne who was labelled as the man in charge was shown pointing where to go and pointing the way forward. Six bullet casings were recovered from outside the social club following the shooting. Graal was taken to hospital with a one centimetre entry wound to the back of his thigh and then he later underwent surgery in order to remove a bullet which had become lodged in his leg. In the aftermath, 
of the incident, the Burns were caught on camera running back to a property having stashed their bikes elsewhere. The bikes were never recovered by Merseyside police. At around 11 o'clock the same evening, Mr Smith and James Byrne allegedly left for their respective homes and all three defendants then dropped their phone numbers the following day. Smith was subsequently arrested and gave a prepared statement under interview claiming he had no knowledge or involvement of the attack and had not been on the beach real estate for at least a year. Curtis Byrne was detained when police attended his home and they saw ping out of a bedroom window. He then tried to run but was caught after falling and he gave no comments when interviewed. James Byrne was quizzed by detectives but exercised his right to silence throughout. So, since that incident to now, it's taken more than two years for the Byrne twins to have their day in court over the shooting. But in the interim, the Woodchurch organised crime group unravelled during a month of bloodshed in December 2022 and it ended in tragedy which shocked the whole of Merseyside and indeed the whole nation where 26-year-old Ellie Edwards was gunned down outside the Lighthouse pub in Wallisley. So first came the moment where Curtis Byrne was shot in the legs at 8pm on December the 3rd, it was reported that residents took refuge upstairs in their homes after hearing two shops separated by a scream while a man who was hit by these bullets was seen being dragged through gardens by another male in search of safety. Witnesses stated that his assailant fled the scene on a moped before police arrived at the scene. One meanwhile added that the incident was over in seconds. But the incident ironically saw Byrne's secret life of crime exposed when the police visited him in the hospital bed. Messages, videos, screenshots and notes were found on his phone at this time which would link him to a whole host of offences. The officers had attended his bedside in hospital two days after the shooting in order to obtain a statement from him in relation to the incident and the prosecutor later told the same court in February 2023 that Byrne was unable to provide any reason why anyone would want to shoot him when he asked by his visitors from the force. The coppers then asked to look at his phone to see if anything on there could assist the investigation, but he aroused suspicions when he suddenly began deleting material from his device. When seized and analysed, it revealed that Byrne, who walked with the use of a crutch during this hearing, had been involved in the supply of coke and cannabis in a string of burglaries in which high-value cars and motorbikes were stolen. Texas found a large number of fairly short video clips showing large bags of cannabis and blocks of cannabis resin in conversations with customers over the course of several months. Mester showed contacts regularly asking to purchase drugs from him with Byrne seemingly having no difficulty in fulfilling these requests. Several tick lists were also discovered in his notes app showing monies owed to him, totalling several thousands of pounds. The phone uncovered his involvement in five separate burglaries targeting properties between July and November 2022. There was a number of burglaries where the occupants of the homes would be sleeping, break into the houses and rob they're high performance cars. So the final burglary came in the early hours of November the 28th when three men said to have been James Byrne Smith and remember the name Connor Chapman were wearing ballys and gloves and broke into a secure shed. It took them around 10 minutes to remove various locks from the door after which the offenders took two electric surround bikes and fled through a removed fence panel. The total value of all the vehicles taken, some of which were never returned, were an estimated £50,000. Byrne was arrested on December the 22nd after the device had been analysed with a quantity of cannabis, suspected counterfeit currency, a black balaclava and the battery from an electric bike seized from him at the time. Byrne admitted conspiracy to commit burglary and theft after being concerned in the supply of cocaine and cannabis following the discoveries on his phone and he was jailed for seven years. So, his shooting was cited as one of a series of violent attacks involved in the Woodchurch and Ford OCGs which culminated in Miss Edwards' death. So, Nigel Power, the KC, appearing for the prosecution as Chapman stood trial, accused of killing a detail how the Glock pistol used in the attack on Byrne when they fired at a man called Kieran, also identified as a member of the Woodchurch set on December 2018. One of the supposed targets of the lighthouse pub shooting, Jake Duffy, was linked to a stolen Ford Cougar car which had been present at the scene of the assault upon Cowley and was later torched. On December the 23rd, Duffy and his associate Kieran Solkeld then subjected a rival Mr Searson to a brutal assault 
on Highfield Road by repeatedly punching, kicking and stamping on him. And shortly before midnight on December the 24th, the popular beautician Miss Edwards, may she rest in peace, was stood outside the pub in Wallaceley Village smoking a cigarette when she was shot twice in the head by Chapman, who had been loitering in their vicinity for nearly three hours. Five men, including Duffy and Salkeld, were also injured after being hit by some of the 12 bullets which were fired from a Scorpion submachine gun. Prosecutor told the courts in June 2023 what otherwise might have been viewed as a random or inexplicable shooting of a wholly innocent woman, Ellie Edwards, was in fact the culmination of an ongoing feud between people from the Woodchurch estates and people from the Ford estate, which included Jake Duffy and Kieran Salkeld, who were the intended victims of the shooting. Chapman was later asked on the stand whether he wanted revenge for Curtis Byrne being shot and he replied, no, not at all, but his account was roundly rejected by members of the jury and he was unanimously found guilty of Miss Edwards' murder, as well as the associated offences including the attempted murders of Duffy and Salkeld, and handed life imprisonment with a minimum term of 42 years. In December 2022, we'd also see James Byrne arrested when police raided his flat in connection with the supply of drugs. He was one of the three men found inside a property in Wallasey, when it was searched, with the search one, it was executed and they found around £800 worth of coke and £600 worth of cannabis. And Berners arrest, he said, it's all mine, everything here is mine. He was also linked to the JJ Line, a county lines operation which supplied drugs in the Birkenland area between June and December 2022, after its graph phone was evidenced to have co-located with his personal mobile number. Two days afterwards, the JJ Line graph phone sent out a message to users stating JJ had a few problems in the past few days Back on at 8am tomorrow morning on a new number. He said, sorry about the past few days. Back about town tomorrow. We've got the best. Byrne was eventually handed a six year behind bars in February this year for being concerned with supply of heroin and crack and possession of coke and cannabis with intent to supply. And he responded to the judge saying, lad, you're a nonce and your breath stinks. This again would be echoed when the brothers were convicted of attempted murder and possession of a firearm and... They called one police officer in the courtroom a little nonce and another one, your bellend, as well as threatening, I'm coming for you. The Burns, as I said, returned to court and they were both handed life sentences with a minimum term of 18 years and 8 months. Sentencing judge Garrett Byrne told them these offences were committed against the background of long-standing feud between two gangs in the world. Those gangs were highly territorial, one based in Woodchurch and one based on the Ford estate. I'm satisfied and sure that this dispute was rooted in gang rivalry of the trade in illegal drugs in this part of the world and beyond. The offences were the latest in a series of retaliatory tit-for-tat incidents of violence and both gangs were willing to engage in reckless street violence with no regard for safety of others. He said this is a very serious offence involving an attempt to shoot and kill another young man and there are good grounds for believing that you will both be in serious danger to the public that cannot be reliably be assessed at this time. This is one of those exceptional cases where a life sentence should be passed. So guys, here's a new story coming in from the streets of the UK. It's your boy GZ. Keep it locked, keep it real.